Hello everybody and welcome to the Murrin Music YouTube channel. Stick around to learn how to build this simple guitar pedal board. Before you start building this pedal board, you need to round up the following materials. A half inch thick piece of plywood, at least the size that you want your pedal board to be. Some rubber feet, mine are roughly a half inch wide by a quarter of an inch tall. You need some appropriately sized machine screws and matching T-nuts. Mine are 632 by half inch long machine screws with matching 632 T-nuts. You need some decking material for your pedal board. I picked up this piece of Superloop fabric from West Coast Pedal Boards on Reverb.com. There will be a link in the description below for that. Next you need some half inch by half inch by 1 16th inch thick aluminum C-channel. You can pick this up at most home improvement stores. Just make sure that you get enough length to equal the sum of all your sides of your pedal board. And lastly, you need some wood screws for holding your aluminum border onto your pedal board. The first thing you need to do is determine how big you want your pedal board to be. Mine is going to be 10 and a half inches by 15 inches. When you wrap the aluminum border around the plywood, it will cause your pedal board to be 1 8th of an inch bigger in each direction. So I'm gonna cut my piece of plywood to be 10 and 3 8 by 14 and 7 8 that way when I add the border, the final dimensions of my pedal board will come out to 10 and a half by 15. You can cut the plywood in a number of ways, either with a handsaw or a table saw or a jigsaw like I'm doing here. Just make sure that your piece is straight and square when you are done. Next, you need to measure where to drill the holes for your rubber feet. Mine are inset one inch from the corner, but it doesn't matter where you put them, just make sure that the feet will not overlap the aluminum when you add them on. Once you know where your feet will go, you can drill a hole all the way through the board the same size as the shaft of our T-nuts. After that, you can partially drill a bigger hole to countersink the back of the T-nut. The best way to do this would be with a Forstner bit and a drill press. However, all I had were these self-tapping paddle bits, which are probably the worst thing that you could use. But if you just go slow and make sure you don't go right through the wood and use a chisel to clean up the hole, then it will work out just fine. Once that's done, then you can pound the T-nut into the plywood and flip it over and screw in the rubber foot. Then you want to take your Velcro fabric and cut it to size. You want to cut your fabric a little smaller than the plywood so that there's an even reveal all the way around the board. This makes it easier to glue and will keep the edges from bunching up when you add the aluminum border. Then you can use some spray adhesive and follow the instructions on the can to make sure that that fabric never comes off of that piece of plywood. After that is dry, the last thing we need to do is cut the mitered corners for our aluminum border. Set the miter saw to 45 degrees, measure each side of the plywood, and cut your aluminum C-channel 1 8 of an inch longer than the plywood side. If you measure each side of your plywood individually and cut an aluminum piece to match, your pieces should fit, and you should end up with nice tight mitered corners all the way around. Now mark two holes in each side piece for screws to hold them on. Pull the piece off and drill an appropriately sized hole for your screws. It's a good idea to do some test drilling in an extra piece of aluminum to make sure that you have the right sized hole. I'm using a step bit here which works great for drilling into aluminum and then cleaning up any burrs with a file. Now put the aluminum back on the board, drill some small pilot holes in your plywood and tighten down your screws. At this point you can clean up any of the corners with a file to make sure that there are no sharp edges and you're done! I made my pedal board 10 and a half by 15 inches, which is the perfect size to fit inside a normal backpack or laptop bag, which makes it super easy to carry around, and it is the right size for my acoustic guitar pedal board. So figure out the size that is perfect for you and go make your own. Well, there you go, a simple, easy, cheap way to build a nice guitar pedal board. If anyone has doubts about how well Velcro holds, you can see with just two little strips on this pedal, it's not going anywhere, it doesn't move. I don't know what you would do where this would not be enough, but it holds on there. If you have any other thoughts on ways to improve this pedal board, I would love to have you share those in the comments below this video. Otherwise, make sure to subscribe to my channel to not miss out on any new future videos. But most of all, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.